got tight traps, I'll show you a few things that you can do for long-term recovery. Take a look. So today's video will be taking a look at what's called the traps, which is slang and often refers to the upper trapezius muscle. Now the upper trapezius is just one portion of three different areas of the general trapezius muscle and it tends to be an area of contention for a lot of people as they feel a lot of soreness, especially if you are an office worker or a desk worker. Now, some of the most commonly prescribed things for this muscle group is to do some stretching based exercises. But if you're watching this video, you probably notice that you only get very temporary relief with a stretch, often only getting relief while you're actually doing the stretch. And as you probably notice, it's kind of hard or impossible to be stretching all day, nor is it beneficial to do so. And this is because some of the research shows that stretching is not actually really related to pain control at all. In fact, it's mostly just related to increasing range of motion. But if you don't really have a lack of range of motion in lateral flexion or straight flexion, which are the opposite motions that the upper trapezius does, then it's not really warranted as an exercise to prescribe. So instead, we'll be going over a few other ways to mobilize this muscle and to actually promote some recovery. Now, some things that you wanna consider before we start going to some of the exercises, you really have to know that a tight upper trapezius muscle is a very multifactorial problem which means that you have to take a look at your sleep hygiene, how much you're prioritizing good sleep quality, as well as monitoring both your stress and anxiety levels. So if you need to, please consult the correct healthcare practitioner to address those other areas that might be contributing to your upper trapezius health. Now, one of the things that some people don't really take a look at is addressing any type of impingement or peripheral nerve entrapment of your spinal accessory nerve, which is one of your cranial nerves. Now this nerve, before it goes to innervate the upper trapezius, which is a motor nerve, by the way, Way, it travels through a muscle called the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is this muscle found on the front of your neck. So the first exercise that we'll be doing is going to be a nerve flossing exercise for the spinal accessory nerve. And we're going to be doing this to help mobilize the tissues as well as decrease some nerve-based tension. Now, before we get into this exercise, it is important that we're doing a nerve flossing exercise, not a nerve stretch, which means we are not trying to put the nerve under any type of tension at all. So if you feel any type of tension in that nerve, you're probably doing it incorrectly or you're probably moving it within ranges that you don't currently have yet. For most intents and purposes, this exercise should be done tension-free, pain-free, very comfortably. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to make a fist and we're going to have this arm placed in front of you at roughly shoulder height. From here, we're going to be pushing that fist forward to draw that shoulder blade into protraction and your chin is going to be starting in a light chin tuck and this is your starting position. Now we're going to be doing two to three different things at the same time. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be then pulling that fist backwards to pull and draw that shoulder blade backwards into retraction as you can see here and as we're doing that nice and slow we're going to be actually allowing our chin to jut forward. So you're going to jut forward with your chin here but that's not the end of it. We're also going to bend our neck to the opposite side. So what that looks like is I'm going to draw, draw jut scapular retraction and then side bend. And then you're going to come back and do the exact opposite. You're going to do this nice and rhythmically to kind of mobilize the spinal accessory in there. So really it should just feel like you're moving. You should really shouldn't feel any tension. If anything, you should feel a, some tension relief towards the end of this exercise. You'll be doing anywhere between 20 to 30 repetitions per set. And again, these are symptom-free sets and you could do up to two sets per day. And this will help to mobilize that nerve and decrease some muscle tension. All right, up next, we'll be doing some strengthening and conditioning exercises for the upper trapezius. Now, the reason why we're going to be doing some strength and conditioning exercises for the upper trapezius is because Research shows that some strengthening exercises can help with increasing tissue pliability and decreased pain. So we're gonna be taking advantage of that. We're gonna be modifying this exercise so that we do an isometric squeeze at the top. And that's because isometric exercises have also been shown to provide an analgesic effect, which means it can help with pain control. We're gonna be doing a modified shrug called the Gittleson shrug. And you can do this with any type of weight. I'm gonna be doing it with a 10 pound dumbbell, but you could be using a kettlebell instead. And in terms of how much weight you'll be lifting, it'll really depend on how difficult you actually find this exercise. We'll get into that once I show you the demo of how to do this exercise. So first, you can be standing or seated. I'm gonna do a seated because I'm a little bit more comfortable that way. It helps to isolate this to the trap only. And I'm gonna have this arm just lying straight like that. From here, I'm going to use my other hand just to stabilize my body by grabbing the other end of the chair. And I'm gonna be starting with my neck bent away from my arm, okay? So this is contralateral flexion. From here, I'm gonna simultaneously shrug my shoulder up and bend my neck so that my ear gets closer to my shoulder. And I'll hold that shrug for about two seconds. And then I'm going to just nice and easy 
release it back down to this nice stretch position. So what you've probably noticed is that this is combining both a stretching and a strengthening movement into a single movement. So you kind of get best of both worlds. This is so that you could provide some functional strengthening in the, these lengthened regions as well. And that should provide some better, longer lasting relief. So from here, once again, I'm going to be shrugging up, bending my neck, hold for a one, two, back down to a rested position. You're going to do anywhere between 10 to 15 repetitions to the three sets, making sure that you take about one to two minutes of rest in between sets with this. Now, if you're not sure how much weight to lift, because 10 pounds might be too light for you, 10 pounds might be too heavy. For me, 10 pounds is too light, but I'm just using it for demo purposes. How do you determine how much weight you need to use? Now, I like to use what we call rating of perceived exertion, which is RPE for short. There are a lot of different types of scales, but I like to simplify my scale a lot. I like to just make my scale out of one to 10. How difficult is this exercise for you? I like to stick to about a five or a six with this type of exercise with some personal preference to you, depending on how sensitive that shoulder is at this time. When you're hitting your rep ranges, I know I've listed 10 to 15, you don't have to hit 15. I often like to tell my patients to do as many as they can with about two to three repetitions in reserve, which means they could probably do two to three reps before they hit failure, but we're just stopping short because the goal here isn't to hypertrophy the tissue and reach failure. Instead, the goal here is to mobilize the tissues, get them learning how to contract through its full range of motion, deliver some more blood flow, get some more circulation going through there and deliver an analgesic effect to that shoulder muscle. This exercise can be part of your normal, regular exercise routine. You could do this about two to three times a week. I uh, wouldn't do it every day unless you're holding a lighter weight. If you wanna do this daily, you can, just make sure it's on a lower on the difficulty scale of four out of 10 or less if you wanna do it daily, just so that you make sure you're getting enough recovery to the muscles involved. Now, if you don't have a weight at home, don't worry, I got your back. I'll show you an alternative right now that you can do. All right, so we're gonna be focusing more on isometric type of contraction that's going to be a little bit more effort based which means that depending on how hard you squeeze you'll feel more intense or less intense again just go off of that six out of ten metric okay. so first you're going to start with your hands up in the air and from here you're going to shrug your shoulders up so it's an overhead shrug motion shrug up as high as it can and what i'm doing is i'm trying to get my upper trapezius muscles to contract and squeeze and i'm going to hold that contraction for up to five seconds squeeze 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 i'm trying to reach as high as i can almost as if i'm trying to get my hands to touch the ceiling and then I'm gonna come back down and relax completely for another five seconds. So we're trying to keep the work to rest ratio one to one. So if I'm gonna do a second, seven second hold, rest for seven seconds. If I wanna do a 10 second hold, rest for 10 seconds, so on and so forth. Okay, so we're gonna go for another repetition, striking up. So I'm trying to get my shoulders to touch my ears, I'm trying to go as high as I can. If you think you're going high enough, you're probably not, go even higher. So really go as high as you can and back down and relax. And I'll show you what it looks like from the back. So I'm gonna turn around real quick hands up in the air. I'm gonna shrug those shoulders as high as I can, really trying to make sure I'm reaching up and engaging those upper trapezius muscles. Okay, in terms of how many repetitions you wanna do, since we're doing longer holds, about five second holds, we're gonna do about six to eight repetitions. So in total, you'll be doing this for about 30 to 40 seconds uh, of work with about 34 seconds of rest in between. You could do this exercise daily because it's lower load, which means you can do it safely on a daily basis and it should give you a lot longer lasting relief than just doing your regular stretches. Now going back to doing some strength and conditioning exercises, we're gonna grab those weights and do another exercise. Okay, so we're gonna grab some weights. It could be kettlebells or dumbbells, it doesn't really matter as long as the resistance is suitable for you. And again, use that six out of 10 scale and the two to three reps in reserve guideline. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into a bent over row position, but we're not going to do a bent over row. So we're going to kind of slide our hands down, hinging at the hips, keep the spine nice and neutral until your hands are about knee height, give or take a few inches. From there, what I'm going to do is actually shrug my shoulders back. So this is a combined movement of elevation, scapular elevation and scapular retraction. So I'm gonna engage some of my rhomboids, my levator scapulae, my upper trapezes all at the same time. So from there, having a nice good grip on my weight, I'm gonna shrug up, towards the ceiling, I'm going to feel that squeeze happening nicely. Now, what's really important is that you're not just shrugging up, you're actually trying to squeeze back as well. And that's just going to really get good squeeze and engagement of these muscles. Again, I'm going to hold that contraction for up to five seconds, get a nice isometric contraction, and then coming back down, rested four to five seconds here, and then we're going to go again. Just like the last exercise where I showed you how to do the overhead shrug, you can do this exercise for six to eight repetitions, making sure that you're just holding it for about 30, 40 seconds in total. You can also do this without the weights. If you don't have any weights, then you can just have your hands 
hanging. Obviously with less resistance, it's gonna be at a lower intensity, but as long as you give it your, a good squeeze, you, you really get a good contraction out of it. So even though I'm not holding any weights, if I just squeeze as hard as I can, you can feel similar levels of engagement in those upper trapezius, liver, scapula, and rhomboid muscles, okay? All right, so those are some exercises I usually recommend in addition to some stretching-based exercises to some of my patients that come in with chronic trap pain. Purpose of this video was to give you some alternative solutions to what you're already doing. These exercises don't necessarily replace the exercises given to you by your physiotherapist or chiropractor. If you haven't seen one of those healthcare professionals yet, I highly recommend coming into a clinic to do so. You can book in at Rehab Hero if you're in the Toronto or Markham region just by clicking the link found in the caption below. Below. If you have any questions regarding this video, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, please hit subscribe and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.